Hey guys, for this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make a working motion tracking animation system with CV2. So basically, we're going to be constantly getting the positions of the player's head, hands, and body, and it's constantly going to be adding those positions to a list. So we can take that list and get every single position and rotation from that list and set them onto a different object. So first, we're going to get an update at 30Hz, then get an if chip and a bool variable, then get a vector3 list variable. This one's going to be the hand position, so just name this hand actually left hand position, and then clone it and make this one the right hand position. Then get a list quaternion variable, and this variable is going to be the rotation, so the first one to make it a left hand rotation, and then clone it and then just name this one the right hand rotation. So we're going to use this if chip and a bool variable for the start button, so just get a button, then just clone this bool variable, then get a knot and then place it onto the bool variable, and then it connects us up to the bool variable, then connect the press to the bool variable. Then we're gonna check if the bool variable is true. If it is true, it'll play. So once I click the button, it'll switch to true and click it again, and it'll switch back to false. So I'm just gonna name this button start. Then get a list add and then just clone this over four times. Then get a player right hand rotation, a player right hand position, player left hand position, and a player left hand rotation. So now just connect these up to these variables. Then connect the then to the list add. Now since this first one is the left hand position, we're gonna connect this up to player left hand position. This next one is the right hand position, the so right hand position. Then this one is the left hand rotation. And the last one is the right hand rotation and just connect these up. So now if we click the button, it'll just keep on adding our hand rotations into these lists. But we also still need the body and head rotation. So get a player head position and a player head orientation. Then get a player body position and a player body orientation. Then we're gonna need to clone this quadrant variable and make this one the head rotation. Then clone the vector three variable and name this one the player head position. So now just select these both and just clone it again and make the quadrant one the body rotation, then the vector three one the body position. Then just select all four of these and then just clone these over. Now connect this up and then connect these to the head rotation, the head position, then the body rotation and the body position. Then you connect these items up to, this one is the head rotation, so the player head orientation, and this one is the player head position. This last two is the player body rotation, so player body orientation. And the last one is the player body position. So now this will get all of the rotations and positions of our whole body, but we still need something to set the positions on, so we need like some sort of player model. So I'm just going to make a small player model real quick. So that should be good, these are all split, but make sure you edit your objects and select them and center your pivot point center pivot on selection and do that to all of them so now configure all of them we're just gonna configure the head first scroll all the way down and turn on can modify with circuits and give it a tag this one's the head so i'm just gonna give it the tag of head then do the same thing with all of them so for the body i'm gonna give it the tag of body and turn on can modify with circuits So I just gave him all the tag, and now we need to get these objects. So get a record object, get first of the tag, get four of those, and now put the tags of each of your tags inside of the chips. So first I'm going to do the head, so head tag, then the body, then the left hand, and right hand. Hover over these to make sure it doesn't say invalid. If it says make up an object, then you got the right make up an object and it's the right tag. So now we need to make a system to get all of these rotations and positions and apply them to this to rotate and position all of these. So we're gonna get a set transform. I'm also gonna do the same thing of this, so it's gonna be like an on button, so just I'm gonna clone these, and I'm just gonna name this button like play animation or something. And make sure you name this bool variable different. I'm just gonna name it bool. And if there's other players in the room, you're gonna want to sync these variables. Now get a list get element, then get an int variable and an add chip. Move these after the set transform, and I'm gonna clone this same variable over to the side next to the list get element. Connect this int variable to the add and make this add by one. Then you can accept the list get element. Connect the then to the set transform. This to the target. Then the list get element to the position and also clone this down one connect this up to the rotation then you connect this index also to the end variable then you connect this position to one of these so i'm just going to do the left hand position first then connect this one up to the left hand rotation 
Now the target, since I did the left hand, you're going to connect this up to the left hand object. We're going to move this over to the side because we're going to need to keep on cloning the set transforms. So now clone this over to the side, connect this up to the set transform. I'm going to do the right hand now, so I'm going to connect this target to the right hand. Then select these list get elements and clone these over. Connect these index to the end variable. Connect the top one to the position and the bottom one to the rotation. Now connect this list to the right hand position. And then connect this bottom one to the right hand rotation. So now if we just hook this up to here and if we test it then it should work. So as soon as you start it then it's going to start tracking. So I'm just going to drop a maker pen and click the button. Then it's tracking. It's doing its thing and then click it again turn it off so now if i hover over this yeah it should have all of the frames so right hand position left hand position they should all have the same amount so now if i click this button then these hands right here should appear like right there yep there we go so they're just like they just did exactly what i did and to actually play it again we're gonna need to set this in variable back to zero so just execute this in variable and then turn this off i forgot to turn it off execute it again now we're gonna need to clear all these lists so just get a list clear and make eight of these and just connect all of these up and connect these all up to the lists now execute it then it should clear all the lists so now I don't think the rotations on these things are correct. So I'm just going to do a little test real quick and I'm going to fix the pivot points on these hands. So if I start it and then I just kind of do that, make sure got to turn this off and then set this to zero, then play it. Then yeah, that is not correct. So my hands were like this and they're completely rotated incorrectly. So, so now I could just edit it, then just rotate it to how my hands were. So like that, same with this one, like that. So now if I clear the list, oh, turn this off, clear the list. Then if I test it again, if I reset this int variable, play it. Then, there we go, it's exact. All right, so now we did the hands, and now we're going to do the head and the body. So first, select the two set transforms, and just clone them over to the side. Now disconnect this, and connect this up to the set transforms, and this up to the int variable. And this first one, connect this target up to the body. And then also just select these two list get elements, and clone these over to the side. Now connect the top one to the position, and the bottom one to the rotation. And then connect these two indexes to this int variable. So the top one is the position, so this one's going to connect to the body positions, so right here. And the bottom one is the body rotation, so it should just be right here. And now for the next set transform, we'll connect this target up to the head. Now select these two list elements and just clone them over the side again. Then connect the index up to the end variable. And the top one to the position, bottom one to rotation. And this top list is the position of the head. So right here, head position variable and the head rotation up to this bottom one. So now before we record it and play, I'm just going to show you how, if you want, you could loop the animations. So we're going to clone this if chip over next to this end variable. Now get a greater or equal chip, then connect this end variable to the A and the result to the condition. Then we're just going to get a list get count, then connect this up to the B, and then connect this list to one of these variables, doesn't really matter. I'm just going to connect it to the left hand position, then connect the variable to the if chip. Then we're going to clone the variable and then just connect this then to the end variable and make sure this input is zero. So now it'll just keep on checking if the variable is greater or equal than the than just one of these variables, then uh, it'll reset the int variable and it'll just keep on looping. So I just clone this button down here and name this a stop one. So this start one, it just changes the variable to true and the stop one changes it to false, just so it's a lot easier. So if I start this and just do something, just move around, then I stop it. Now if I come up here, click play, they should all motion track. That looks crazy. It just uh, it just looks like a perfect animation. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope this helped you with making a cool motion track system. See you guys in the next video.